In the past, Goji Center has covered dozens of ways in which several creatures could eat a human being. But today, we're going to showcase a much different experience. Getting eaten by Titans. In this episode, we have pre-selected a total of six Monsterverse Titans to illustrate the unique experiences that a human would go through if they ever got unlucky enough to find their way into the mouths of these hungry monsters. The journey through each Titan will be different, bringing different levels of pain, damage, and duration. Some of the stuff you're about to see will be a bit disturbing, so if you like this sort of stuff, make sure you follow or subscribe to be the very first to witness more kaiju carnage. Coming up, the literal journey inside the mouth of a Monsterverse kaiju. Before we cover our first titan, let's first talk about how you now have the opportunity to play as these kaiju in World of Warships, our sponsor. A massively epic free-to-play game available on PC with top-notch graphics featuring 40 maps with dynamic weather, stunning new water effects that make it indistinguishable from the real deal. Play as a lone wolf or in a division with your friends and immerse yourself in a plethora of recreations of World War-era naval vessels and even some unused warship designs that were never produced during these wars. Oh, and this game is also available on consoles. But now, this game has partnered with Legendary Entertainment to bring Godzilla vs. Kong to World of Warships. This means that you will have access to special ship skins, patches, camos, and have these titans commandeering your fleet to victory via 3D models standing on their corresponding ships. While fighting, you'll hear the indistinguishable roars as the commander's voiceover, as well as several sound bites from the movie. This is an extremely limited event, so make sure you get moving. Get your GVK customations before August 26th. So make sure you hit that link in the description and during registration, pick a side using the code Godzilla or Titan Kong, and you'll automatically get awarded with 300 doubloons, 1 million credits, three ship crates, five days of premium account, premium ship USS Charleston, 10 Godzilla or Kong themed ship camos according to your choice, and Godzilla or Kong commanders. Premium ships Takibana if you're Team Goji, or the USS Smith if Team Kong. Thanks to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. And now, let's go back to the episode. Our test subject's journey through a monstrous digestive tract will begin as soon as you're acquainted with the type of kaiju we're dealing with. In these simulations, we are well aware that some test subjects might not even make it to the creature's stomach alive. But to ensure that they make it as far as possible, our kaiju will be instructed to swallow and not chew our test subjects. Doing so would render this episode down to just a minute. Where's the fun in that? To begin, we will study a titan who is anatomically similar to us humans, in the fact that the skeletal and organ arrangements very much resemble our own. Number 1. Kong our first test subject will be dropped inside Kong's mouth. While this happens, we will analyze closely what happens during its journey and find out how long this person can stay alive for. Kong's build is very similar to us humans, with a digestive tract that includes the mouth, esophagus, stomach, large and small intestine, etc. It is what happens in these locations that we will follow closely. In Kong Skull Island, we witnessed a crew member fall into the jaws of this massive titan. Note that this Kong was just a teenager, meaning that it was much smaller than our present-day Kong, which measures somewhere around 335 feet in height. You're about to find out that getting swallowed by this larger Kong will allow you to live a little longer. Let us explain. Once dropped inside the throat of this massive kaiju, it would probably only take you around 8 to 10 seconds to fall all the way to the bottom of Kong's esophagus, accounting for all the friction you will encounter while sliding. You are rapidly running out of oxygen and inhaling toxic gases that are found inside the digestive system of organisms that actively eat a variety of food sources, methane and sulfur. Inhaling these gases will cause irritation to your eyes, lungs, and breathing too much methane will cause you to throw up. But you're still alive. You will now land into Kong's massive stomach. At this point, you could technically be considered as a bolus, a chunk of food that is entering the gastrointestinal tract. And you're in for a beating. Stomachs such as these have a mechanism on the stomach lining that pounds food in an attempt to break it down but you're too small to be broken down. During this horrific, dark experience, your presence triggers the hormones to release acids to start breaking down your body. How fast? 
Well, given that Kong is a carnivore that eats raw meat, its stomach acids need to be strong enough to break down bacteria and pathogens that are ingested. This hydrochloric acid in smaller creatures would be comparable to car battery acid. But you're now getting showered by this stuff, meaning that this overwhelming amount of corrosive material would eat through your skin in a matter of moments. Your outer layer of skin is gone, and now it's eating into your flesh. You're dead at this point, with an estimated duration of around one to two minutes. Eventually, your body would turn into a pulp and be digested along Kong's long intestines. Believe it or not, this is the longest you will last inside a kaiju digestive system. Coming up, a similar but very quick journey through a hyperverous creature. Number two, Skull Crawler. We have covered what it would feel like to get eaten by a skull crawler before, but this time you're getting swallowed, and we'll go into a little bit more detail. This skull crawler we have here is a juvenile. Although smaller, these are all capable of swallowing an average size human whole. But how long can this victim survive? Let's find out! Unlike Kong, the digestive process of these animals is a lot different than your conventional eat-digest-poop cycle. As our test subject travels down the skull crawler's esophagus, the human will find it ever increasingly more difficult to breathe oxygen thanks to the gases emitted by this creature's stomach. Shortly after, this guy will fall into a stomach full of green bile, ready to digest the proteins found in your body. Keep in mind that this green bile will most likely be already present, ready to digest you. The reason is because there is more than likely other stuff inside already being digested, since these animals are hypervores. Animals with a metabolism that demands that they must always eat. An animal with such instincts will be forced to be on the lookout for the next meal at all times, inducing stress. So it just so happens that animals that are going through stress will regurgitate their food. Or in other words, spit it back out to focus their energy on hunting or fighting instead of digesting, as a way to relieve itself of the bulk of its meal. So you've made your way inside the stomach of the skull crawler. This green bile washes you with corrosive agents so strong that it dissolves your skin and flesh, similar to what happened in Kong's stomach. The difference here is that after your flesh and organs are all digested, you will be vomited. We are stepping into the realm of speculation, but it is likely that juvenile skull crawler digestive systems are incapable of digesting bones, causing them to spit you back out in order to possibly relieve themselves from any extra weight so that they may hunt their next prey. The amount of time that you were alive in this skull crawler would probably last just under a minute, since the concentrated bile would expel enough toxic gas to knock you unconscious. Either that, or you suffocate once pushed into a mush of half-digested carcasses in the skull crawler's stomach. At least you made it halfway through the digestive system. Your trip through the next Titans will probably end a lot faster. Number 3. Rodan up next, we encounter a titan whose biology will make it a lot more difficult for you to survive an extended trip down this animal's throat. Now, if you know anything about this monster, you will recall that this creature can thrive in superheated biomes. And as far as being biologically volcanic in terms of anatomical composition, Yes, the big angry bird's temperature skyrockets above the previous titans, matching the temperatures seen inside volcanoes. Well, how hot are these? Magma is said to reach up to 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. In order to give you an idea of how hot that is, it takes temperatures of 1600 degrees Fahrenheit to burn a human to a crisp, assuming you stay inside the fire, which will be your case inside Rodan's body. In 2019, we witnessed this pilot get eaten by Rodan. But how long did it take for this dude to die? Let's find out! As we drop our test subject inside Rodan's mouth, we start noticing that he starts to react to the intense heat. Rodan's fleshy tissue is resistant to these intense temperatures, but yours isn't. In a matter of moments, your body begins to literally cook while you're still alive. Making contact with Rodan's esophageal walls, for instance, will be like making contact with lava itself, causing instant third-degree burns all over your body. The good news is that you don't feel third-degree burns because the nerve endings get burned as well. But the edge of those burns are excruciatingly painful. 
Your journey sliding down through Rodan's esophagus will end early, since you probably won't make it anywhere near this animal's stomach before turning into burnt matter, making your trek last just around 10 to 20 seconds. Your body was too small to maintain its integrity all the way down this animal's esophageal tract, leaving you more burnt than that well-done steak you ordered last Saturday night. The next Titan might do the same thing to you, but with different means of doing so. Number 4. Monster Zero After providing absolutely no nutritional value to Rodan, we are now about to find out if our next test subject will suffer the same fate or be useful at all to our next kaiju, Monster Zero, or Ghidorah. We have witnessed this guy eat someone before, but fortunately for her, she most likely died upon impact, sparing her from what probably followed after. Before we throw our dude through one of these throats, let's take a quick moment to understand something very important. This kaiju's biology. The composition of this kaiju has lots of traces of aurum, or gold, and it just so happens that this material is a perfect conductor of electricity. In addition to that, it is said that this kaiju had electroreceptor molecular biology, transferring currents everywhere. This is seen in how electricity seems to make its way throughout all parts of this creature's body. Consequently, it is only feasible to think that someone dropped inside the mouth of Ghidorah would only survive for a few seconds before succumbing to the energy levels running through his body, almost as if every surface of this animal's esophageal tract was a taser, meaning that any muscles would contract all at once and the heart stopped as a result of the excess in electricity. And in some cases, people who are exposed to shocks like these will sometimes urinate or even defecate themselves in the process. We'd like to think that your roller coaster journey through this tract will last no more than around five seconds. If you think about it, that is a very long time getting shocked from all directions. Your body may or may not make it to this creature's stomach, if it has one, depending on how much of it disintegrated during the trip down. If you think this happens too fast, wait till you see what happens to our next test subject. Number 5. Eaten by Mecha Godzilla. This is a titan that is not necessarily built to eat anything at all, but it is good at processing anything that makes its way through its jaws. If you have seen our episodes covering Mecha Godzilla, you are now well acquainted with the many weapons this thing possesses. But one of the most gruesome was its set of grinders located inside its jaws. There is no trachea to travel down, so instead we will just drop our test subject into its bottom jaw and see what happens. These grinders are exceptionally well-purposed to grind larger chunks of meat, which makes grinding a human as if it wasn't even there. The flat surfaces on these grinders would flatten you to a pulp in a matter of seconds. This particular test subject was unlucky to get crushed legs first, meaning that he would have felt every single last bone of his body crushed until his upper torso followed, and finally his head. The level of pain from falling in this machine would depend on what angle you fell into these grinders. If you ever happen to fall into one of these, go head first. Now is time to move on to the last kaiju on this list. Number 6. Eaten by Godzilla Getting eaten by this kaiju is unique, in that you might actually make it further down than you initially think, but it will really depend on what mood or state Godzilla is currently in. Monster vs. Godzilla as we know him appears to have many different states. His normal, non-aggressive state, his radioactive display, and burning states. Obviously, getting swallowed by the burning state only means that you'll catch fire before even making contact with Godzilla. But what about the other ones? A Godzilla in normal state would still be something to watch out for in terms of temperature and most definitely radiation. Radiation poisoning will most likely occur, but that sort of damage could potentially take a couple of hours to completely kill. Now, admittedly, this is a one-of-a-kind wild card since we aren't completely sure what Godzilla's digestive system looks like, if he even has one. But what we do know is that Godzilla is bionuclear, meaning that the insides of his body have to be steaming hot, and there should be parts of his body that help regulate or expel that heat probably why he spends most of his time in the water. 
But anyways, let's return to our final test subject, who will be dropped inside Godzilla's throat. Here we see the human making his way down Godzilla's esophagus, while at the same time making contact with the esophageal walls. How hot is this place? A good reference is to compare it to the temperature of an organic cooled heavy water moderated reactor, which can reach temperatures of up to 752 to 1004 degrees Fahrenheit. Keep in mind that this is a Godzilla in a normal state. These temperatures are enough to cause your own internal liquids to boil and cook a human body alive. This, unfortunately, would be a gradual process. After a few seconds, your organs, including your brain, will fail to function. Your blistered body will have made it to the next stage of this animal's esophageal tract. Whatever that may be. A stomach full of acid? A gizzard full of bionuclear flammable material? Who knows? What is certain is that no human will survive. Are there other titans out there that could provide our test subjects with a more gruesome experience? Let us know what you think in the comment section! For more content on your favorite kaiju and crazy science fiction what-if scenarios, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and support the channel by checking out our merch store by clicking on the link in the description or scanning this QR code. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video!